It's Saturday, November 2nd, 2024. You can see my lifter upside down missing a wheel. I went to town and uh, so here's the story. I bought some three quarter inch bearings for those wheels that I bought. Now, I'll back up a bit. I went into the store, I returned the wheels that I had bought, which had five eighths bearings. And then I went to the shelf to find wheels with three quarter bearings, but they didn't have any. But a nice fellow that was working there, I said, I'm looking for this wheel and a three quarter bearing. He said, well, you don't have any, but we got the bearings. So you can just pop that bearing out, punch in this bearing and Bob's your uncle. Oh, good. So six bucks, six, seven bucks for a pair of bearings. So I bought, you know, two sets of two because each wheel takes two. So I'll show you what's going on here with the lifter now. So I've got it up with the wheel off it. And get my bearing here. I put that bearing on the wheel on the axle and it's pretty darn loosey-goosey on there. So I don't know what's going on. I did notice that he's turned this down. So what I would think is that perhaps this is a three-quarter shaft that he's turned down. I don't know what the logic is. Uh, the logic is make it cheap, is what it is, because you can see where those plastic hubs have been running on this axle. And it does the axle does turn in there, but it just turns in a pipe, right? There's no bearing or anything in that. So I don't know. I can put these bearings on the new wheels, but they're gonna they're not going to be uh, tight on the axle. So what do I do? If I had a, a little round shim thing I could put in there to tighten that up, that'd be awful nice. Yeah, so <laughs> the lifter conundrum is uh, still in progress here. Can't just fix it. That's very distressing. It's Monday, November 4th, 2024. And as you can see, I've been playing with some polystyrene panels. My concept for wintering my colonies that I am going to winter outdoors is to insulate them with these polystyrene panels. And it's going to be a lot of work, but boy, this stuff's expensive now. Um, I'm actually going to be using two inches of polystyrene. This is a fairly... Um, I wouldn't say it's new, but it's not been deteriorated. This has been out in the sun, so you can see it's kind of shrunk down a little bit. Uh, so I want to use two inches of polystyrene. All these spare panels I have are one inch, so I'm going to have to, you know, sort of laminate them. And that causes all kinds of issues. I not only have to lam laminate them, but I have to make them bigger. So, uh, yeah, so I did the math. And uh, I thought, you know what, what, what am I saving by doing all this work? You know, I always want to look how much money am I saving by not going and buying brand new panels and just cutting them up on the table saw. And by the way, cutting these, this stuff on the table saw sure is a breeze and makes a really nice job. So uh, what am I saving? On wintering 35 to 40 colonies, I'm saving most of $1,000 worth of material. That's how much I'm paying myself. So... I think it's worth a few days of work here. And I hate throwing things away. I like to reuse things and make use of the stuff I have. So you may uh, remember a few years ago, and I don't remember, it was maybe about three years ago, I did a kind of an experiment where I, I screwed one inch polystyrene panels to the back and front and the sides of my, my beehives. Um, the intention there was to give the hives a bit of insulation in the spring. Um, the worst period of time, in my opinion, for my bees is when I take them out of my wintering building and I put them in the apiary, and then we get some pretty cold nights and sometimes we get some pretty cold days too after that. 
it, it is possible for me to move them back in, but it takes most of a day to get everybody transferred. So, you know, I can't just move them in and out every day. I realized that doing that, I, I kind of predicted it, but I realized that doing that, it was a bit of a management nightmare. The boxes with this polystyrene, it just was not convenient at all. So I started dismantling that and I've just kind of stored away all these panels over time. And this is nothing. What I've got here is nothing. There's probably three to four times as many of these as what you see. Uh, so what I have to do is try to make uh, appropriately sized panels for the beehives. The beehive boxes that I'm using are uh, 20 and an eighth inches front to back and 16 and 5 eighths inches wide. Uh, so I've cut quite a number of these uh, two inch panels and they're actually nine, about nine and nine sixteenths, nine and five eighths high. Uh, so I've cut a bunch of these to that size and so that's that's going to make one nice you know contiguous panel that's the easy stuff that's for a, a front or a back on the beehive i don't have enough for everything but that'll get me a long ways so then i need to take these longer ones and they have to be 20 uh 24 about 24 inches long because uh i want to overlap the corners so if this is a if this is a back, I want the side to overlap like that. I don't just want to leave that corner like that. Uh, so I have to have the 20 and an eighth plus two plus two. So that's, you know, 24 and an eighth. Uh, the eighth won't matter really, you know, the eighth won't matter at that point, right? So say 24, easy. Uh, so that's what I'm trying to make out of these. Now the problem is these are not 24, these are 20. Uh, so I not only need to laminate them this way, I need to make longer pieces by four inches, which is really great. Putting two things together, you know, when one of them is really short is a big pain. Uh, so what I started doing was I started cutting, I had some, some sides and backs, but I also had some tops and I've cut these. So you can see there's a feed hole in the middle. I, I cut this off right at the side of the hole so I could, you know, I could salvage this piece. This, this is kind of going to be waste. And uh, that's 16 and a half. So that'll be the same as this two inch piece that I have here. So that's pre-cut to length as 16 and a half. So that's good. And then, like I say, I have these longer pieces that I'm going to have to stitch together and make even longer uh, for, for the sides. Uh, I only need two sides. I need, I need four fronts and four backs. And I'm, I'm talking about the pallet now because these are going to stay on the pallets. So I need, I need two uh, backs and two fronts and two sides for each box. So then they have doubles. So I have to have four sides and eight fronts and backs. That's complicated even more by the fact that uh, the front and back, the, t the one on the top box, I'm cutting an inch shorter because of the overhang of the migratory cover. That's not going to be an issue in the winter because I'm going to have a quilt box on top of that. So it'll be a straight side. However, when I take the quilt box off in the spring, I'm going to want to take that migratory cover and put it right down on top of the top brood chamber uh, so that polystyrene would then get in the way. I don't think the lack of insulation up that high is going to really cause the bees too much problem. Um, so what I've got here is, uh, you know, nobody likes red tape, but red tape really is the deal for this job. And I, I bought some spray foam. Now, this stuff is, it says low pressure, uh, will not warp uh, kind of thing. It's used for windows, windows and doors, it says. And so what I wanted was I want a spray foam that's not going to increase in volume very much. Um, I've been told, I haven't tried it yet, but I've been told that this stuff is really the best thing to glue polystyrene together, oddly enough. 
and I know they make a glue to glue polystyrene together, but I've used that stuff, and when I used it, it didn't work. Uh, regular glue, if you put regular glue on this stuff, it just eats right through it. It doesn't stick, and it uh, damages the polystyrene. So I'm going to try the old spray foam trick and see what I can do. Uh, so again, these my my logic here with these is that I've I've cut you know I've cut the the one side off and it's kind of an arbitrary length or width. I had to move the fence with each one uh, to get just kind of right by the the feed hole here and basically I'm going to take that fresh side that I cut and turn this around and you know tape or glue and or tape tape and or glue that together and then that'll make a piece that's uh, you know nine and a half high for the box side because typically these are only going to yield seven to eight you know seven seven and a quarter to seven and seven eighths um, so we need need a little bit more there all right so i'm going to have to clear a workspace here and uh, try to do some of this i don't want to be using this stuff on my table saw so i'm going to have to bring up my sacrificial uh, work surface here because uh, that is nasty nasty messy stuff um, so i have to figure out exactly how i'm going to do this getting pretty congested with all this polystyrene around and I have to kind of stay organized right I have to stay organized so so these are these are like I say these are long pieces uh, could be used for sides uh, I kind of have to keep a count because it looks like I've got quite a few pieces for fronts and backs and I may be uh, in want of more pieces for sides uh, so that's just the way it's going to go. All right. So uh, this is a this is a process of discovery. This is not me showing you how this all works. This is you and I sharing a, a process of realizing how it, in all the ways it doesn't work and maybe uh, a workable solution to make this work. What I did find out first of all was this this red tape is really wonderful stuff it's very sticky and it sticks at low temperatures which is nice uh, however these you can see the difference in color here between this and this this has got a little more green tinge to it and what you may not be able to see is it's uh it's chalky it's powdery right the sun has really beat it up and uh the tape doesn't stick to that right the tape doesn't stick to that at all so if I'm going to laminate two pieces and then and then tape the surface, I'm going to have to put the damaged side inside, or at the very least, you know, put the damaged side on the side that contacts the box. But I may not know which side that is at this point. So I think putting the damaged side on the inside is what's in order here. Um, you can see. I think I used some some. Uh, what was I using? I think I was using um, Honey Bandit for my fume boards and a little drop of it on the polystyrene, it just makes a crater <laughs> in it. So that's not very good. I'm not sure I'll use that, but we'll see. Uh, the bees, you can see the rings for where the pails were. The, the bees are always trying to rob the syrup, so they'll chew under the, under the pail. Uh, uh, to, to prevent that, I eventually actually went to the store and I bought a couple of four by eight sheets of uh, coroplast and I put a piece of coroplast on top of the the cover uh, the polystyrene and that was good that kind of solved all my problems in that regard uh, so now I've got all these sheets of coroplast with a two inch hole <laughs> but it didn't it didn't prevent uh, the bees you know some of them are worse than others but the bees would even chew away at the uh, sides of the two inch hole in the polystyrene. So it really wasn't a really good solution, but it gave me enough data to realize that it uh, was a solution to a problem that didn't exist. <laughs> or it was a solution to a problem that I don't think I'm willing to go through that length to solve. 
Okay, so if you, th you think, well, if I'm going to be wintering outdoors and it's going to cost me X number of dollars for uh, wraps or wrap material, uh, and there's a lot of other kind of wraps you can buy, which is great. They all work great. This is what I happen to have here, and it's not costing me anything but work. Um, but why don't I invest in, in proper wraps? Why don't I invest in just some new polystyrene panels or something like that, which would be a really good idea. However, this is still prototype. This is still in the discovery phase to see if I want to do beehives outside in the winter. Um, I think I will, but what I would like to do going forward is to buy polystyrene boxes. There's a uh, there's a company in Edmonton, Alberta, makes those. And Doug Longman has been uh, uh, demoing those over the last couple seasons. So I'm constantly asking Doug, so how are those doing? You know, tell me all about them uh, because I might go that direction. So that not only would uh, give me, uh, it would not only give me uh, my winter wrap, uh, you know, insulation gives me spring and fall wrap insulation and summer, you know, it, it, insulation doesn't keep things warm. Insulation is a, is a thermal separation. So on a hot, hot day, it's going to separate that heat from the sun and the ambient heat from the inside of the hive. They can deal with that a lot easier, but it also, uh, reduce, reduces my workload and my workload in the late part of the summer when harvest comes along uh, my workload is the defining time uh, as to how many colonies I can manage I I think you know in May or June I could manage 300 colonies in September I can hardly manage you know 120 because <laughs> it's just uh, uh, there's just a lot more going on when you start to get into harvest. You got harvesting, extracting, feeding, treating, moving bees, it's endless. So I don't need more work. And uh, that is the chief reason I winter indoors is because it's way less work for me. I can just pick up those beehives out of the yard with my tractor and a few hours, uh, they're all in the building. So I allocate one day to that and that's done. Whereas wrapping, you know, and you wouldn't think, oh, it doesn't take that long. Well, almost everybody I know who wraps has help, right? They have somebody to hold the other end of the rope or whatever it might be. And wrapping all by yourself, I think that would be a lot more issue. Uh, especially, especially me, I'm not built for that. It, it, there's a lot of stooping and kneeling and all kinds of things. That's young people stuff. So that is chiefly why I winter indoors. It has nothing to do with the bees. There's indoor, outdoors, both are viable. So I want to see if this is a management problem, if, if, this can, uh, if this can be viable. So if this does work out, then next year, perhaps, uh, I'll maybe buy some of those polystyrene boxes, transfer some colonies into the polystyrene boxes, and uh, then I can winter those outdoors uh, throughout the winter. And so here's another thing that would save me work and time and effort in the fall is if I'm wintering those colonies outdoors, then I can winter those colonies in place, meaning at my out yards, right? So now I'm not moving bees in the fall, or at least those bees. Uh, I just have to go out and feed and treat them and then, you know, lock the door and say good night come back in the spring. Well, it's not quite that easy, but that's kind of what it amounts to. Um, so, you know, wintering outdoors and putting them in polystyrene boxes, that sort of thing, I think is a, it looks like a really good plan. So I want to see how that goes. I'm not going to jump in full steam the first, first day because or the first season, because you know what happens is there's always unknown gotchas. It's kind of like, yeah, I didn't plan on that. No, is that ever a, a pain? Uh, or that cost me a lot of money or that cost me a lot of time and effort. Uh, so I want to make sure that I don't fall into any of those pits along the way. All right. So you know the, the why now. And uh, I got to figure out how. So let's 
do some of this. <laughs> I don't know exactly what I'm going to do here, uh, but uh, I cut all this stuff up a couple of days ago and I had a plan. And I don't remember my plan now, so we'll just sort of wing it and put some of this stuff together. Okay, these pieces are the pieces that I cut off of here. Of course, this one didn't come off of that one, but, but that's what happened. I, I cut that 16 and a half, which is, again, that's, that's a front or a back. And uh, so what I can do, and then after I cut that off, this was a, a straight edge, so I ran that through the table saw again, cleaned up this edge real nice, so I can turn that, and I can glue that back together, and that's going to make a slightly taller panel, because, you know, I need, I need nine and a half, which is, which is that long, so I really only need another inch to inch and a half on there, but that's okay. Uh, I'll, I'll glue that together, put a little backstop here so I can just so I can push against that. I'll glue that together um, and I can probably I can probably glue two of them. It's a rough edge on this side against the backstop. that's okay. So I can probably do two of them, glue that down and then take that tape off. This is a few different pieces already. That's okay. So if I put that down and then I can take a second one of these and do the same thing. Now if I do that, and I'm just walking through this, if I do that, make that panel, um, so the one thing is then I can cut it to size, which is about nine and a half. So that'll be a nice straight side. And then I can take that and glue it on again to another piece. But if I do that with, with these pieces, this hole is offset here and I'm missing about an inch of material. I have to decide how fussy I want to get with this uh, because I can't then cut it twice. If I don't glue, if I don't glue, well, particularly this piece, uh, then I can cut that here and then glue another piece to it later. So what's the, what's the answer? I think what I'm going to start with is I can't tape this surface. That's just not going to work at all. I can tape this surface. So I think I'll do that. I love these, these basic standard Ulfa utility knives. I've got probably 10 of these and I can locate maybe two of them, <laughs> like a 10 millimeter socket. <coughs> so I'm gonna tape, whoop, I'm just going to tape that down like that as straight as I can. Okay. I can make, make one end fairly flush and then when I trim it, I don't have to lose as much material. I always curl over one end of it so I don't lose the end of that. It's so sticky. Okay, so that's good. And I'm wondering, uh, I could um, see that doesn't give me enough and that that doesn't give me enough for another piece but uh, if I put this together and I spray foam it and let it set then that'll be one piece and that'll be kind of like shiplap then I can put another piece and and go from there I can cut it at nine and a half and kind of flip it over and put another piece on it I think that's probably a good approach now uh, for this joint, I'm going to try to put a little bit of spray foam in this joint just to give it a, a glue surface. So when they give you two, two tubes here, so when you're using it the next day and the tube is clogged, you're not out of business. Okay, let's, let's see. I don't think it's going to take much. 
We'll just put a little bit on here. Okay. Of course, this is stuff that never stops coming out, right? All right. So let's see how that goes. A bit of squeeze out. I'll take this and sort of push that squeeze out the side. And I can take this tape off and then glue that. Okay, how much glue do we need on here? Okay, I think I want to glue around the end of it for a clamp. Or glue, I want to tape around the end of it. the reasoning behind putting the fresh undamaged side on the outside so the tape will stick to it. I think putting that piece on at this point may have been a mistake. So it's gonna, gonna be expensive, but that's $11 a roll for that tape. It's very, very thin though, so there's a lot of tape there. Okay, I can, I can stabilize this too. Bit. All right. So I'll leave it at that. And so I think going forward, what I'll do is I'll forgo putting this piece on right away. Because if I have a bunch of these, then I can shiplap this stuff on here after the fact. It's Tuesday, November 5, 2024. Uh, so we had a pretty rainy weekend. And then last night it got quite cold. I didn't check the overnight low, but it was, I don't know, probably on the order of minus five. And so it's quite frosty out here. And my weather app says it's minus one right now. The frost is melting anywhere the sun can hit it because the sun is up and it's quite hot. And uh, it's not especially late in the day. Well, it's nine o'clock, it's mid-morning. So uh, the hives are just starting to melt off. And this is a, an interesting time to kind of get an idea of some of the thermodynamics going on in these hives. Before I show you that, uh, I brought some of, my, some of my bits and pieces out here. Actually, they're behind here, you can't see them. I'm going to fit some of those polystyrene pieces to a few of these hives. Um, the process is progressing. It's going okay. Um, it's not going exactly the way I had planned, but um, the result is uh, certainly acceptable. 
and I, I think I can make good use of those polystyrenes. Now it's going to take a lot of red tape and red tape's not cheap. However, you know, 50 bucks of the red tape, tape is uh, better than a thousand dollars worth of polystyrene. So let's have a look around the apiary here and uh, we'll see kind of the tops of these hives uh, where you can tell what kind of uh, heat the colonies are producing in these boxes. Now these two here are singles and a little bit of a little bit of melting there, a little bit of melting there. Uh, this one is a little more dramatic. So I would expect that this is a, a stronger colony. And you can see that it's actually drying here. So I can I can definitely feel the difference in temperature between the frosty side and the the drier side. So that just kind of gives you a visual as to the temperatures that these colonies are producing. See, these are not only melted off, but that it's dry there in the center. So that's good to see. Uh, it's really good to see because that indicates the colonies are strong. Uh, it, you know, if it gets too much colder, it's not what you want to see because it means that you haven't insulated the colonies very well. My feet are getting wet here in the cold. So here's a nice strong one in the middle. Look at that, how it's just kind of got rid of all that frost. There's another, another nice strong one in the middle there. So some of these colonies are doing all right. I think they're all doing all right. Some of them are doing just a little bit better. So there's one that's melting there. This one's not quite as warm. So I find it an interesting exercise after a, a light snow or a overnight frost like this to look at the hives. Just to see. And my babies are in there and they're making the heat and they're staying warm. I watched an interesting presentation this morning by Randy Oliver on wintering bees. So he's certainly got a lot to say on that topic. I just love watching his presentations. There's so many nuggets, you know. Um, I, I don't know that I really have a lot to learn from Randy about wintering bees. However, listening to him speak on almost any topic will reveal nuggets that, that I've never heard him say before, or he'll expand on some little details about something. And, and uh, I find that very helpful. See, this one's, I don't know, this one might be, this is actually one of Randy's queens. Um, this one might be more or less deceased because that uh, frost plug is, or that feed plug is completely frozen solid. Well, that one is kind of too, but it's, there's water under it. And there's ice on top. Boy, that got cold last night. Wow. Okay. So here's the, of course, you know, I ended up with um, 35 and a half pallets of, of doubles. <laughs> so, so this will be an oddball. This will just go in the building. I'm not going to insulate that one. Uh, but I've got... I've got 35, 35, no, there's 35 colonies, 35 double colonies. Uh, so what is that, 17 and one? So here's my, here's my panels, the long panels, the long panels here will go on the side like this top and bottom and they'll they'll stick over for two inches I'm doing a little different than I did the other one and then the short panels will go front and back so for the short panels I have two two heights the bottom panel here uh, will be nine and a half inches which is the height of the box and this will be eight and a half inches to give a little bit of space for that cover overhang I'm trying to predict my management struggles in the spring with this wraps and uh problem is with that idea is if i take this top box off the bottom box will not accept the lid if i don't take the the polystyrene off of it 
So I'll put this back on the tripod and then I'm going to screw some of these on just to kind of get an idea how this goes. The worst part of this for me is getting down on the ground and, and these are on stands so they're not even as low as the other ones. So these panels I made, uh, these panels I made will go right on the bottom. It'll go above the, the bottom board shim. So just go on the box. I don't want that protruding down. I'll actually push it right up under the bottom of this box and screw it onto the the box just like that. I'll try to put the fronts on first. I think it's cold enough they won't come flying out at me, but if I crash around at the back and the sides first then they might be kind of getting agitated in the front so I'll do the front first I kind of went overboard with these first few they uh, don't really need all that tape on them just kind of finding my way you know it's a process of discovery on how to do this it's a lot of work, but boy, that stuff's expensive too. I like it. I think it's a good material for this. You know what? I'm gonna. This is just a little shy of the width of that box. I'll push it to the middle so I can push the two pieces of. Yeah, I don't know. That's hard to know which way to go because there'll be a gap then. Okay, that's on there nice. Now, we'll see if I can get a short front. Put right there. Oh, my kneeling on the wet grass. It's always nice. I've got these from before. I've got them on shorter screws from when I just had the inch insulation on there. So it was an inch and a inch and a quarter, inch and a, inch and a half screw, I think. Now it's a two and a half. That rattling on the box, I know that kind of gets them stirred up a little. Okay. That looks pretty good. So that's all ready for winter now. This one I have to do left-handed. My left hand is not as, not as accurate for stuff like this. <laughs> oh, I've got it in my right hand anyway. Doesn't have to be super duper tight, you know, this polystyrene is pretty strong, but it does compress, so you can just drive that washer right through it if you're not careful. You can see by the bee poop that I have used these panels in the past. I, I just set them on top of hives for cover insulation at one point. Most people don't screw the panels to the hives as you make a box that slides down over the hives. 
which works great. It's easier to apply. But since I didn't have those built already, I thought, you know, I've done this before. It's pretty easy. All right. So there are the fronts. And because the migratory cover doesn't hang over on the sides, only the front and back, then these two pieces are the same. They'll go right to the top of the box. So if you missed me say, I'll say again, this is a solution that is using uh, more time than I want to use, but it's using um, material that I already have. So other than a few dollars of red tape, I'm not spending any money on material. If you can get the screw to go through that red tape, it's nice because it supports the polystyrene. From over, over compression. Okay, it's really nice, you know, you put those on and they're ready for winter, ready for cold weather. Okay, there's always going to be cracks and whatnot at the corners, I'm not sure that's a big deal. You know, you could spray foam that, I suppose, but I don't think it's a consideration. Um, I might wrap this again with plastic. Mike Manino said, maybe wrap it with plastic because I've got a lot of seams here for the wind to uh, work on all winter. So that would, that should be pretty easy. My first piece of advice if you're doing this is try and do it on a day when the grass isn't wet. <laughs> my, feet, my knees are so cold. <laughs> okay, two more. Bob's your uncle. Well, what do you think? Does that look like it's ready for a Manitoba winter? I'm quite confident it is. This amounts to an R10 value. And the beauty of polystyrene is it does not lose its R value when it gets wet. It doesn't absorb water, just the characteristics of it. So if we get, you know, days, days like today, frosty, then the frost melts and then the water runs down, even if there's water sitting between the box and the polystyrene, uh, this is still going to offer insulation value. So uh, that's our tan. This stuff is our five per inch. And the only other time I wintered outdoors I used bee cozies. Uh, I just had singles. I didn't have pallets. I just had a, it was a double, but it was just a one single bottom board. 
So I put a bee cozy on that and a bee cozy is R8 and it's not even something that's that's tight against the hive like that. So I think this will be certainly sufficient. And as Mike suggested, I think I, I'll try to come back with the, the uh, plastic wrap and just go around, certainly, certainly to close up the gap between the two boxes. And then that'll close up the gap on the side here too. Just a wind block. I'd really like to cover it with something white. Uh, but the the blue polystyrene is fairly pale, so it won't absorb too much uh, sunlight. I don't think that the uh, daily solar gain is a a benefit to the bees. I think it's a negative thing. So I think I have a few more to do. Well, I'll install what I have here, and then I'll go back to the shop and put some more together. I ran out of tape again. I wasn't sure how much tape it was going to take. And there's there's red tape and there's blue tape. And I think the blue tape is even stickier than the red tape. Uh, the, the blue tape is more suited to uh, installing vapor barrier. The red tape they found wasn't sticking to vapor barrier. Uh, the red tape works great on the polystyrene. I hope this stuff does too because that's all I've got for now. And then I have to go back to town, get some more tape. And that's a 30 to 40 mile, that's 30, yeah, 30, 35 mile round trip. So you don't want to do that just on a whim, right? You need need to make that worthwhile. But this is uh, getting to be pretty urgent now, so it will be worthwhile regardless. Thanks for watching this. I hope it's helpful. Like I said, it's not a how-to, it's just a, it's a kind of a makeshift solution for this year uh, until we can go forward with this idea of wintering outdoors. Um, I mean, if I lose all my bees, <laughs> I'm not spending any money on wintering outdoors until I can do it successfully. But uh, I'm pretty sure I can do it successfully at some point. Um, and it's, uh, you know, meant to be a fairly economical way. I don't have to buy wraps. I don't have to buy more new polystyrene and build covers and on and on. So but I am gonna build quilt boxes, so I've gotta to get to that too. But the quilt boxes, uh, you know, they don't have to be put on right away, first thing. They can be put on, you know, almost any time, really, because it just, it amounts to a, a deep box on top. So I'll take the cover off, put a deep box on top, put the cover back on that. Yeah, so, all right. On we go. Thanks for watching. Now the first two here, uh, these two panels, I uh, I cut those, but they're still in the shop. I forgot to bring them out. Uh, this was the kind of the prototype. I I fit these pieces in in place right on the hive here. I changed my mind as to what I wanted to do here. I don't really think it much matters. I just changed my mind. I, instead of lapping it this way I decided to lap the side piece so it doesn't really matter so if you count that up there's two pallets and there's a pallet there and there's two more pallets down there so that's five on this row and then you can see here is where I started running out of full pieces so there's that and there's that one there's only some front and back pieces on the top and this lonely piece so then I've got I got one there I got two uh, three four more doubles uh, to do so I've started them all but four. There's still quite a few pieces to cut yet though. I found some polystyrene in the shed. That I'm gonna cut up pieces. Boy, this stuff's so expensive. You gotta use every square inch you can use. I think I'm gonna look on the for sale, uh, the used for sale list in the city. And uh, there's some 
listings there for odd bits of polystyrene and since I'm making smaller pieces um, it doesn't have to be a very big piece for me to be able to use it I'll go around it as long as it's a reasonable price I'll buy it from the people that have it listed so so here's the other thing I was talking about where I was going to enter these bees and you see out here it's pretty open it's pretty open and there's not really a whole lot of snow collects here I was I was planning to take them over here this is you're facing north now so just on the south side of that uh, tree row I was going to put them there because there's a lot of snow collects there um, but then you know I've been thinking maybe I won't do that because the whole idea behind wintering outdoors well the major idea is to uh, kind of change my management style for my aging body and if they can't winter here in the apiary i think i think uh i might want to rethink the whole strategy because the whole idea is to reduce workload not increase it um and that's what I was talking about, those polystyrene boxes. So there'd be no workload there as far as wrapping goes, etc. And if I leave them here and they winter okay, then I will have that, that test. Like this is kind of a test here this year. This is why I don't want to spend a, too much money on all this wrapping insulation. So I think I'm going to winter them here in place. There's one more pallet than a full row here. I can get 12 pallets in a row. I've got 13 pallets. Um, so I'll have, you know, one solid row of doubles wintered outdoors right up here on this side. So if they winter here, that'll be great because then I can winter my apiary in place in time. If I can convert my whole apiary to uh, polystyrene boxes, and winter them in place just don't move them at all um, another big reason big push for this is i want to recover my building i really miss having that building all winter uh, so i'd like to get the bees out of there eventually and i don't know exactly how that's going to play out because i've got these six frame nukes and you can winter those outdoors but it's a little tougher i'd end up moving those around and building some you know some pretty amazing wintering wraps for those so we'll we'll cross that bridge and get to it if if i'm only wintering the nukes indoors i might be able to do something else for a building either do a sea can or put up a little building or something uh so these are just all the thoughts that are going through my head with with this you know getting old getting old and there's no two ways around that we're all getting old but boy when you you hit 50 and <laughs> you get old a lot faster than than when you're even 40 my 40s were great my 30s were awesome uh you know your 30s are awesome because you're still young and you're starting to make money and <laughs> you've got a little bit of wisdom so you don't do so many stupid things so anyway this is me talking about life but those are things that are going through my mind because i i have to I have to either figure out a way to make this a little easier physically or give it up. I don't want to give it up. It's a, it's a good little business. I've built a really good business here. And uh, I, want to, I want to keep going. I don't just want to pack that in. Always airplanes going over. <laughs> I wonder if they look down and, and want to see what the beekeepers doing that day that's what I wonder did they say oh it's beekeeper he's working the yard today <laughs> okay well it is a little cool here still uh, there's a bit of a breeze and my hand is cold holding the camera um, but the bees are actually in the sunlight I don't know if you can see them but in the sunlight the bees are actually flying uh, I mean the odd bee not <laughs> by any means full flight but I see a few bees venturing out uh, so it's uh, yeah the sun 
the sun is very, very warm here. The ambient temperature isn't necessarily, but the sun is very warm. Okay, I'm going to pack this up. And uh, I ran out of tape, so I think I'm done this little project for today. Maybe I'll work in the honey house, get that ready for the bees, and uh, perhaps duck into town. Maybe I'll duck into town today so that I can resume this tomorrow morning, bright and early. I got up early. I was at work at 6 o'clock <laughs> this morning. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, maybe I'll just do that. I'll go get some tape right now and, uh, then I'll have enough to, uh, uh, to keep doing this tomorrow. I, I won't, I'll hesitate to say I'll have enough to finish. Um, but I have to work that out and, you know, if I get, uh, if I get stalled again, it won't be because I don't have enough tape. Nobody wants more red tape, but in this case, I want more red tape. Thanks for watching. Take care and have fun. It's Thursday, November 7th, 2024. I'm getting along pretty good on my insulation project. I only have uh, four pallets. You can see there's two of them here that don't have any sides. So I have 16 of the longer side pieces. They're 24 inches long and nine and a half inches high <laughs> so that's what i have to still build i think i'm going to have enough but it's taken a lot of stitching together a lot of trimming on the saw and a lot of tape uh, but again it's a kind of a prototype sort of a endeavor and uh, it's 8c by the weather app and it's it's full bright sun uh, it's starting to get on in the day though the sun the sun sure goes down early these days but uh, I'll turn the camera around and show you what's going on here. So there's a couple of the wrapped hives. And I don't know if you can see that on the camera, but there's bees everywhere here. 8C and it's breezy. Full sun on the hives. It's making them warm enough that the bees are flying. They're flying around the hives at least. I, I didn't notice the bees really um, congregating anywhere else. They're, they're hanging out on the top of the hives, just getting some sun warming up a bit. So it's nice to see uh, the places look like a, a real morgue lately. It's nice to see healthy, vibrant colonies again. They do have to settle in though. It's the 7th of November. It's getting pretty late for them to be flying. So they need to settle in and have a long winter nap. Of course, the insulated ones are... I don't know, maybe they aren't feeling the sun's warmth on the boxes, which makes sense that they wouldn't feel that so maybe that's causing them to not fly as much however they are still out we got bees everywhere i had to go to town quickly today actually i ran to winnipeg just the north side of Winnipeg had a really good honey order come in, so I took that in. But now it's uh, early afternoon. I'm going to get back in the shop, and hopefully I can finish putting these panels together today. And then if I don't get out here again today, which I don't think I will, the sun's going down uh, pretty soon, I will come out tomorrow with those panels and put them on, and then the, the paneling will be complete a couple more things i want to do i'm going to make some special entrance reducers for these palletized hives and also uh, a, a bigger project I, I want to make some uh, quilt boxes and i'm just going to use i'm going to use some of these old most of them are painted white old boxes i have <laughs> bees in my hair to make quilt boxes so I'll, I'll detail that when I do it you won't see that till next week likely uh, so anyway I'm gonna get back to the shop 
and just thought I'd update you on how this uh, project is going. It's going well. It doesn't take long to install these once I have them. It doesn't take long at all. I got a bee stuck in here somewhere. I'm not sure what she's doing. So I'll leave you with that. Thanks for watching. It's Friday, November 8th, 2024. It's, uh, it's not desperately early, but it's mid morning. It's about 9.30 AM. And uh, <laughs> that sun, I'm just watching it every day. It's just a little bit lower in the sky throughout the day. It's really not very high. Now, it's, uh, the weather app says it's zero C out here. I, I think it's about that because there's frost on the unlit areas. As soon as the sun hits something though, it starts to frost starts to melt and dissipate, which is nice, but it actually is a beautiful, beautiful morning. It's not windy. That really helps. If it gets windy, it gets very cold. So I'm wrapping up this wrapping project. <laughs> so uh, yesterday I worked a little bit later and I finished up the last 16 of these side panels and that was it. And man, I came down right down. I don't think I could have made maybe more than one more and that would have been difficult with the material I had left. So I made good use of that material. That was really great. Um, I still want to build quilt boxes which require some more material uh, insulation so I don't know how I'm going to do that I typically when I made quilt boxes before I put two inches of polystyrene in them but the quilt boxes have a, a bat of, of shavings wood shavings I quite often say wood chips which is misleading it's not wood chips it's wood shavings which are not as coarse as wood chips i suppose so that'll be uh if i had two inches of polystyrene then that would be about three inches less than a box so that's about six inches a uh, box about nine and a half so you know six inches of six inches of wood shavings. That's pretty good insulation, but the wood shavings are vented. I, I drill holes in the side of the box to vent that. So I still want an insulation value on top. So I'm considering that. Would one inch do? Would inch and a half be better? Um, I don't know because I'm, I'm no doubt going to have to buy some of that. If I just went, you know, and, and went with the two inch, I did do the costing on that, and that would run me just shy of $300 just for the quilt boxes. Uh, so people are always asking me, how many colonies are you winning outside? Uh, 26. <laughs> so it stands 26 right now uh, that I've uh, prepped for outside. I would have settled on 24 had I planned this a little better because uh, 24 is what fits in, in one row here. Uh, but I'll have one row and one pallet. So that's kind of weird. Plus the fact that it's an odd number uh, on in the quads. What do I call a quad? This, this is a quad. So there's two pallets, they face each other. So the reason I have them face each other is the entrance is then uh, has a wind guard from the other hive. Uh, so I'll have one sitting with no wind guard. I can put something there, you know, that's probably what I'll do. But regardless, 20, 24 would be better than 26, I think. Multiples of four is what I'm looking for. So 16 pallets, you know, not 13. All right, so I'm going to get this put on here, and then that'll be a wrap for the wraps. See what I did there? And then I'll get on to something else. I think I'll gather up some boxes for the, uh, for the quilt boxes, and we'll start that project on the next vlog that'll be real exciting won't it <laughs> well I mean, it might be because I'm, I'm referencing that a lot and people really maybe don't have a picture of what i mean you will have soon and you know i realize there's a lot of people going to say you don't need those quilt boxes you don't need those quilt boxes and i i would not disagree with you you don't need those quilt boxes however here's here's my thinking um because i'm getting back to this I did winter outdoors my first year beekeeping. I wintered outdoors. And that year, I didn't lose any bees in the winter that year. 
Uh, I only had 11 colonies, but still, 11 had 100% survive. And I used quilt boxes. And, but I didn't use polystyrene, I used uh, bee cozies. But the bee cozy was R8, this polystyrene is R, R10. Uh, so uh, I, I want to stick to what I was doing that time and until you know i can kind of find a different way because i i know what works i know that recipe can work and i know what it does uh you know if, if there's nothing wrong with the bees so i'm going to stick with that i only have to build 26 of them uh, which shouldn't be too bad and who knows if i decide not to use them i can I can perhaps sell them to somebody who wants to use them. I've mentored quite a few new beekeepers and they asked me how to winter indoor, outdoors. And I said, I don't know, except one thing. This is all I know. And they get into using, I've actually built these quilt boxes for them and uh, they use them and they've had extremely good success wintering. So that's just kind of the, kind of the deal on the quilt boxes. Okay, let's get these panels on. Of course, you have to bring the coffee, right? And that washer, I didn't even show you that. Uh, so that's just a very thin washer. I think it's made for uh, exactly what I'm doing insulating panels it's not a machine washer it doesn't have the thickness you can easily bend that with your hands so that's what i'm putting in here and i want to make one other point too uh, i was editing up my video and i realized i did a um, a bit of a section on gluing the panels together with some spray foam and that does work that does work However, I didn't end up doing it. Uh, I did I did glue some edges, some nice clean edges together and it stuck, it uh, glued together just fine. However, uh, the damaged sides that I've put inside here that I want to glue together don't glue well because of that chalkiness. So I didn't I didn't go any farther than that with the gluing idea. Just tape. So if you're gluing, if you're gluing nice pristine uh, surfaces with spray foam, that'll work. I also tried, I had a, a mostly empty can of Zero C and there's a bee just landed here. Those scouts, boy, they go out at all temperatures. I tried some Elmer's spray adhesive. So that stuff is kind of like contact cement. You spray it on both surfaces. And let it let it tack up a bit. And so I glued uh, some together with that just as a test. And again, if the surface is nice and pristine, that'll work, but not, not if it's chalky. I don't think anything will save the chalky parts at all. I think the insulation encourages the bees to <coughs> stay indoors on those warm days. Um, because the sun doesn't hit the box, thus warming it up and the, the bees don't think that it's time to go. And I may be, I may be wrong about this. I alluded to that video I watched uh, by Randy Oliver and, and he uh, mentioned a few times that he believed that the bees need that stimulus. They need to have the instigation to come out and start flying. Or uh, actually, I was no, not that. It was brooding. He said, he said the bees need to know when it's time to start brooding. 
I don't know that a tree cavity would have that dynamic though. A tree cavity is a lot of a lot of tree wood beside that colony. So I don't know. I just don't know. I just don't believe that uh, thermal gain is a, is a net positive to the colony. I think it's a net negative. You can push these screws through the polystyrene. I prefer to run the, the screw screwdriver, run it down through there with the screwdriver. Because if you push it through, it wallows out a much bigger hole. And then depletes your R value, of course, right? That appears to be the last one. That's not the last one. You can see the last one right here. A long video this week. I hope it was entertaining, enjoyable, or interesting, or informative in some fashion. Uh, so that's that's about it for wrapping, uh, except for maybe bringing some uh, plastic wrap. Mike uh, Menino mentioned that to maybe put some plastic wrap around to to shield the wind from any of the cracks between the panels. I think that's a good idea. I'll need some help with that, so maybe my wife can help me hold the other end of the plastic wrap. A couple of ravens fighting over there, actually. Yeah, fighting or something. It is fall, so maybe it's not something. But regardless, thanks for watching. Take care and have fun. It's Thursday, November 27th. Sorry, it's not the 27th. <laughs>